All right, so today we're going to be talking about dental patient scheduling. This is on chapter 10 of your administrative dental assisting textbook. Uh, this starts on page 156. And so first we'll go over some learning objectives. The first one is going to be to describe the mechanics of scheduling, including the criteria required for matrixing an electronic schedule or a manual appointment book. We'll talk about the art of scheduling and how to maximize uh, uh, scheduling efficiency, including the different methods used to identify when specific procedures should be scheduled. We'll explain the seven different scenarios of appointment scheduling and formulate an action plan to solve the problems. We'll describe the four ways that patients may schedule an, schedule an appointment, including the use of, of a traditional and alternative types of appointment cards or reminders. We'll explain how to use uh, the call list and the daily schedule sheet, which can save time in the dental office. And we'll list the steps to be followed in, the, in performing the daily routine associated with appointment schedule. The appointment book in today's dental practices is, typical, is typically one of the main components of practice management software and is a tool that when used efficiently helps to organize the daily schedule of the dental practice. There are two main elements in scheduling. The first is the mechanics of scheduling, which includes selecting the appointment book or out, outlining or matrixing and entering the information. And the second is the art of scheduling. The purpose of the appointment book and the dental office helps to organize a daily schedule of the dental practice. The book identifies who will be performing which task, on which date, and what time. The book outlines which treatment rooms are available and at what times they're available, and it identifies who is going to be seen, the treatment that will be performed, and the amount of time required to complete the treatment. The paper or the appointment book comes in several different styles. The most common style is the week at a glance. When the book is open, this style allows the assistant to view the full week, Monday through Saturday. When fully opened, books range in size from nine by 22 and seven eighths of an inch to as large as 11 by 35 and a quarter of an inch. The function of the column is to organize a schedule and identify who is performing the treatment, who the patient is, why the, pa why the patient is being seen, and what will be done. The number and size of the columns in the appointment book depend on the style selected by the dental practice. There are four units per hour when scheduling at 15 minute intervals and six units per hour when scheduling 10 minute intervals. Color is used to identify different practitioners, treatment rooms, and types of treatment. Bookmarks, color tabs, and other accessories are easy ways to divide the appointment book according to the day, week, and the month. Remember, when using both electronic and manual systems, you want to identify the patient and the procedure and indicate the time that the patient will be in the dental treatment room. When listing additional information, carefully use the space provided to ensure that the entry remains legible and easy to read. There are two different types of appointment books that we can have. Uh, the first one is a manual appointment book. This is our traditional physical appointment book um, that has certain specifics about the appointment. Um, it's usually a wire bound or loose leaf um, pages. Um, and they are, they can either come predated or undated. Um, an electronic appointment book um, includes specialized features such as missed appointment tracking. Um, it provides up to date call lists and it allows you to uh, manipulate the database in certain ways, such as um, incomplete treatment tracking. So let's say that you want to um, find which, which which patients that you have in the book or in your office that still need treatment um, to be done. So what you can do in an electronic book is you can um, search for all patients that have incomplete treatment in case you want to call um, or systematically call each of them to get them scheduled. So here is the anatomy of an electronic appointment book. And I realize that it's a very small kind of rendering of this. There's a bigger picture on page 159 um, 
of the anatomy of the appointment book. And I'm just going to go over a few of these really quick. So number one is um, here. Um, the time bars on the left and right sides of the appointment book separate hour intervals into selecting into the selected time block size. Um, the calendar button, which is in this little corner here, um, with this you can view production goals, scheduled production, and actual production. Um, the notes we have color coded co color coordinated notes here. Um, and with these buttons, you can enter notes that are applicable for that are applicable for the day. Um, we have on number four, which is this, uh, which is right over here, a unique color can be used for each treatment provider in your office. Um, the date bar up here, which is number five, um, displays the date that's being used. Columns are displayed for each operatory added to the system. So for each time the appointment is scheduled, a color block appears in the, in the appropriate column for the amount of time scheduled. Um, we have a navigation button that, um, uh, the navigation button is up in this corner here. Um, it's used to move from day to day in the appointment book. Um, we have an appointment book pin board that can be used to temporarily store the appointment information until a new appointment time can be found. Um, we can have, these different buttons here allow us to open the appointment um, in a day view, a week view, as well as a month view, in case you want to look ahead um, on either of those, you can look as far ahead as a month, a week, or a day. Um, those are usually useful if you need to make sure that you have enough supplies in the office. Um, let's say it's ordering day, um, and you need to make sure that you have enough supplies for the month. You can use that month view to know exactly what treatment that you're going to um, that the office is going to be expected to do uh, and what supplies you'll need to do that. So this is just a, um, an example of a physical book or a physical appointment book. Um, I'm willing to bet that most offices these days don't work off of a physical appointment book. Um, computers have been around for quite a while now to where um, if offices don't aren't fully integrated into an electronic database, they at least have um, an electronic appointment book to work off of. Uh, but that doesn't mean that emergencies can't happen. Um, computer systems, as we know, always go down. Um, things happen. Uh, um, power can go out, and we need to know which appoint which uh, which um, patients we need to call. So in case any of those emergencies happen, you will need to need to know how to use a physical book, um, which isn't that difficult. A lot of these are kind of self-explanatory. Um, they have um, the same things that, like columns, that columns can be assigned to any individual practitioner or treatment room, um, which is used to record additional information about the patient. Um, and then just like the electronic book, um, there are different units per hour. If there are four time slots in an hour, that means the appointment is going to be, each appointment unit is going to be 15 minutes. Um, and then there's different things that you can also see here. Uh, if there's these little, um, these little red boxes indicate emergency slots. So we have our different um, appointment slots here. Um, and we leave these boxes open just in case a uh, patient calls with an emergency. We want to always try to get emergencies in that same day if possible. And we want to make room on the appointment to be able to do that. So with the art of scheduling, the key is to determine when the dental health care team is the most productive and how, through effective scheduling, the goals and philosophy the dental practice can be met. Also, productivity in dentistry is a complex concept. There are two types of productivity. The first is determined by the amount of dental treatment that is completed, and the second is determined by the amount of money collected. Maintaining efficiency in both areas is a function of the administrative dental assistant. The answers to key questions will help you maximize scheduling efficiency. So how can the dental team members determine when they work smarter and faster? 
Uh, some people wake up early and are eager, eager to get started on work. Because this type of person is most productive in the early morning, um, difficult and challenging work should be scheduled then. For people who wake up later and are less focused in the morning, schedule the easier tasks first. Also, how can uh, procedure times be determined? To determine procedure times, you must average the times over several different patients. Once the average procedure time is determined, a list can be made to identify the amount of time to allot for specific treatments. In addition, the amount of time it takes to properly clean and ready the room for the next patient must be considered. Why is it important to um, consider whether treatment will involve an extended function as dental assistant? So when extended function dental assistants are used, the amount of time that they will spend with the patient must be considered when procedures in which they will assist are scheduled. For example, for a procedure that requires four units of chair time, the dentist may spend three units with that patient and the, and the assistant may spend one hour. The dentist is then available for one unit to work with another patient. Who will do the scheduling? The initial entering of the information into the appointment book can be assigned to one or two persons. It will be their responsibility to set up and matrix the appointment book and to schedule as efficiently as possible according to the guidelines developed by the dental health care team. Scheduling would be easy if every patient and every procedure could be treated in exactly the same way, but this is not the case. We have different uh, scheduling scenarios. Um, first, we have the emergency patient. Uh, so in order to determine whether the patient is truly calling with an emergency, questions can be asked to determine where the pain is located, how long the pain has been present, whether there is swelling, and whether there are other symptoms that will help determine whether the patient must be seen today. Uh, we have patients that prefer afternoons only. These are typically um, patients that might not be able to get off of work and maybe only have uh, an extended lunch hour to get um, treatment done. In order to minimize disrupt disruption to the practice um, due to a chronically late patient, you wanna schedule that particular patient 15 minutes early for the appointment. This will allow time for the patient to arrive late and rest before he or she is seen by the dentist. Fear is frequently the reason patients cancel their appointments. Other, reason includes, other reasons include the inability to pay for the visit and the lack of understanding of the consequences that may occur when prescribed dental treatments are not received. We also have patients that, um, who cannot miss school. Um, a lot of the times um, these patients prefer afternoon appointments. Uh, most patients, if given a choice, would schedule their appointments when it's most convenient for them, which is usually um, in this case for the afternoon. Um, peak appointment times usually occur in the late afternoon, early evening, and the holidays when the dental office is open. Um, controlling these uh, time slots is often difficult, but as an administrative dental system, as the administrative dental assistant, it's your job to make sure that we don't have um, a whole bunch of patients come in at three o'clock. Um, this will just tire out your dental team and it's going to make for um, an, an unproductive and ineffective uh, appointments for all the patients in that time slot. So um, although a lot of patients prefer afternoon appointments, it's your job as an administrative assistant to uh, make sure that, that that doesn't happen. We want to make sure that we spread the schedule as evenly as possible. Um, that's going to make life for um, easy, not only for the dental team, uh, but also for the patients, right? Because they don't like to wait. Um, if we have a patient that arrives on the wrong day, um, you want to inform the unexpected patient that you have them on the schedule at a different time and ask whether they have their appointment card with them. Go ahead and check that appointment card and determine who is at fault. If it is the patient's fault, politely point out their error and offer your condolences. Um, if it's a short procedure that you can work into the schedule without inconveniencing other patients, offer to do so. If the error was made by the member of the dental health care team, offer your condolences and try to work the patient into the schedule if possible. Um, the best way to manage 
the best way to manage patients who drop in and request dental treatment. Um, uh, if the patient has a true emergency and cannot wait until another time, you will have to accommodate that individual. Agree to have the dentist see him or her and tell the patient when the dentist will be available for an emergency situation, explaining that the patient will have to wait until that time. So we don't wanna necessarily turn patients away. We wanna find a way to say yes but at the same time, we don't want to um, we don't want to overload the dental team, um, and we don't want to um, inconvenience uh, patients that arrived on time or have a true schedule for that day. Some results of poor scheduling um, include the fact that patients will wait. And that happens, especially if the patients before them arrive late. Uh, and patients often feel offended and that their time is not being valued when the schedule isn't, um, isn't followed correctly. Um, patients feel stressed from dental staff members because there's not enough time for a scheduled appointment. Um, patients may also question the quality of dentistry. And um, especially because of uh, poor ineffective scheduling makes them uh, have to come to the dentist or have to make more frequent trips to the office. So what are patients likely to do if they often have to wait longer than 10 minutes before they're seen by the dentist? Um, studies show that they will actually look for another dentist who will respect their time and is less stressed. Uh, members of the dental healthcare team often become stressed and overworked and will look for another employer who will respect their time and develop a true team spirit and the delivery of dental care. Um, that will happen, that's another um, consequence that will happen as a result of poor scheduling. Appointments can be made in one of four ways. The patient, number one, the patient calls or is called in for an appointment. Two, the patient is present in the dental office and needs follow-up work in the near future. Uh, three, the patient schedules an appointment through a web-based program from his or her computer or mobile device. Uh, or the patient pre-schedules an appointment at the conclusion of a recall appointment. Each of these situations requires a slightly different approach. So what should the administrative assistant do as soon as an appointment has been made, either when a patient calls or when he or she schedules a follow-up appointment? Well, it is important to record, to record all relevant information on the telephone information form, enter the name and procedure in the appointment book or electronic scheduler, and repeat the information back to the patient. It's easy to become distracted by another phone call or another patient and it's very embarrassing to have a patient show up for an appointment that was not entered into the appointment book. So it's important to do so. Um, if a patient pre-schedules an appointment for a routine checkup at the conclusion of a recall appointment, um, the administrative assistant needs to explain the recall procedure and tell the patient that he or she will receive a card in the mail or an email in a few weeks before the appointment. So here's just an, an example of an appointment card. And the purpose of the card is to remind a patient of the day, the date, the time of the appointment, and sometimes what the appointment is for. Um, appointment cards may have a sticky patch on the back that patients can place on their calendar. Uh, refrigerator magnets are another possibility. And uh, a card can also be sent to the e patient's email address or to his or her mobile device. There are certain uh, time, couple of time-saving techniques that can be used. Um, the call list is a tool by the administrative assistant to help identify patients who are in need of a dental appointment. The purpose is to be able to quickly identify these patients and schedule them for an appointment. Typically, the list is used to fill holes in the daily schedule in case a patient cancels uh, or cannot be seen for whatever reason. Um, a call list can be used to fill those gaps. The daily schedule sheet contains information transferred from the appointment book or electronic scheduler and is used in treatment rooms, doctors, private offices, um, laboratories, and other work areas. 
These sheets contain patients' names, scheduled procedures, and amount of time needed. Um, these also contain personal health information and must be kept out of sight. So if you're gonna use um, one of these uh, schedule sheets, uh, which is actually often used in the dental office, you wanna make sure that they're covered um, so you can put a piece of paper on, right on top of it, um, just so if patients walk by and they glance into the, into the lab where, where, um, where this daily schedule sheet might be posted, um, you don't want them being able to see other patients by. Also, um, you wanna establish a daily routine. So this includes uh, pulling patients' clinical records and reviewing procedures that are going to be completed on the following day. Um, you wanna check patient's charts for any um, information that may not be included on the schedule, such as the need for pre-medication, payments due, or updated insurance and medical information. Confirm the return of, of uh, lab work. Confirm or remind patients of their upcoming appointments. Um, use a call list to fill any openings in the daily schedule, and then also print a daily schedule. Um, these, if you're going to be print a daily schedule only if you're going to be using it as um, um, the daily uh, the daily schedule sheet, like I talked about in the previous slide. Also, spend about five to ten minutes with the dental healthcare team and review the daily schedule. Um, this is typically done in a morning huddle, which is incurs 10 to 15 minutes before the first patient is seen. Um, this is just used to go over um, appointments, different patients that are on the book, um, the different procedures that need to be done. Um, and then in these huddles, um, the doctors can talk to assistants about specific needs that, that he or she might need for um, any patient that's on the book. Um, Additional steps include updating the schedule throughout the day as changes inevitably occur <clears throat> and keep the healthcare team and patients informed of any changes that will affect their schedules. And that's it for chapter 10. Let me know if you have any questions, please email me or talk to me in class. Thanks for listening.